Lloyd Vehicle Consulting, not sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Good afternoon. Today is the 30th of November and uh, we're here at the 2021 Classic Car Show, otherwise known as the Classic Motor Show, um, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance at the National Exhibition Centre here in Birmingham. This is Hall 8, um, where we've been filming today. And um, this is the Ford Cortina Mark II Owners Club. This is part seven of a slightly shambolic shuffle. Don't expect um, stellar camera work, editing, that kind of thing. It's quite busy in here, so I'm going to dodge people. I um, hope I don't fall over. If I get things wrong, then I apologise. That's just the way it goes on this channel. So, start off with this 6970 Ford Cortina 1600 GT Crayford Cabriolet. So, do you remember that Hugh Fundy Whitting still owns one of these? From what I understand. It's really important to get people's photographs in here. Look at that, such a rare car. They did, of course, make two door um, Mark II Cortinas, such as the um, Lotus one was a two door. There we go, Crayford badge on the back there. Another extremely beautiful Mark II Cortina. This is a 1970 Cortina 1600E. And we, uh, we saw some of these at the, at the, the owners club, which is just over there, but not a green one. I do like the colour of this, although personally I prefer a light coloured interior, but that's just me, as many of you know. Uh, it's just ridiculously nice. Like all the stuff that's here is really nice. It used to be the way that it is going um, in here. Another really lovely Mark II in this extraordinary colour. I really like this colour. That's uh, a GT on an F. So, which is 300 Deluxe. Why has it got GT badges on it? Oh well. There we go. So 6768 plate. Another. What is this? Oh, it's a Ford Saxon. Yes, I've heard of this. I didn't realise it survived. It's in 6962. It's very much like a two door Cortina. Ford Classic and Retro Sports Car. Uh, Ford Escort RS. Sorry, 40RS Cosworth. Patched. I do apologise. I said I might get things wrong, and that's sadly how it seems to be going today. Um, Escort Mark 1, Mexico. What book called the RS Mexico, but I might be, might be wrong. Very, very late one, it registered in 1975. Very late. Well, it does say RS on the steering wheel, so maybe I'm vindicated in calling RS Mexico. Never mind. Again, it is just ridiculously clean, really clean. Talking about um, console classics and console capris, here is a console capri from 1963 on an A registration. I mean, very, very much of its time it had the styling, but the styling like this went out of fashion really quickly. The Lincoln Continental from 1959, I think it was, looked sort of like this. Or, but the, um, the taste changed very quickly. So this is a Ford Console Classic 315 2-door. It's five-star motoring. Also the Console 315, I tend to call it the Classic. The reason it's the 60th birthday is because uh, I think these cars came out in 61. Another console Capri. Oh, someone's 
Oh, the window open for me so I can have a look. Yes, white, some ivory white with red interior is very nice. Just so typically kind of American influence. Here's a four door console classic. Again, pre suffix, so probably 61, 62. Same thing with this console Capri. Very, very typical colour of sort of late 50s, early 60s. And look at that roof line there. A bit like a Cit Citroen Ami. Saw some Amis yesterday actually, but uh, they appeared in the first part of like a symbolic shuffle. So, yes. <laughs> Very much, um, there's been filmed since then. 1966 Wolseley Hornet Pines Converse, one of 37 built by McCrayford. Wolseley Hornet was very closely based on um, the original classic Mini. There we go, yes, 1966 plate and an L. Deep, sorry. I'm not doing very well today, viewers, am I? Oh, and Crayford Cortina Mark II Lotus. <laughs> I didn't realise they even existed. But here we are. That's crazy. Uh, so yeah, 1970 only out on a J. That's some Corsairs. And that must be a Crayford convertible as well. Uh, 66. I think the, the Corsair, which replaced the console classic, was made from 63-64 to um, around 1970 when it was sort of replaced by the Mark III Cortina. There you go. Don't see many of these at all. They're, they're very, very rare cars. This is 65. Again, it, it looks, I can't remember which, which Thunderbird this looks like, is it 61, something like that? I, I'm really bad on things like that. Another 65. I wonder if any of these have the uh, V4 engine in them. It doesn't look like a V4 engine to me, so not this one. So this has console Corsair on it. It's a bit late, it's a bit later, 66. I remember these sort of interesting door mirrors on them. Yeah, this is the estate version. Oh, it's a GT. It's quite a high um, floor in this. I wonder why the floor's so high. Yeah, I'm sort of surprised, really, these, that they don't actually have more classic interest than they do. You know, things like. Uh, Mark 1 Escorts are worth an absolute fortune now. Ooh, 2000 and 2005. Volvo S62.45. Got some uh, interesting emergency vehicles here. Yeah, of course, it's got a manual gearbox. Yes. Volvo V90 ambulance, probably. Similar sort of chassis to um, hers. I wonder, wonder who made the um, the uh, body for this. Because they're very popular as hearses, so. Oh, right, so it's just a 2001 plate. Interesting. So actually, this is still a working vehicle. It says it's still used for a rapid response kind of. It'd probably be the um, 3 litre straight six in this. Range Rover by Carmichael. What year would this be? 76. Used it for topping up toilets for their event business. Interesting. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> yeah, it's an auto, just like the 960 that I filmed. Um, back on the channel in May 2019. The V90 and 960 facelift states were very similar. <laughs> and there's a big Mercedes fire engine too. 
more Fords. Like this uh, Sierra RS Cosworth hatch. Don't know what uh, year that is, I'm afraid, viewers. Let's um, put a display plate on the back, then I'll be able to tell you. There are only four colours to these, I seem to remember. Ooh. Ford Falcon Ute XR6 Turbo. I bet this is fast, viewers. There we go. It's fine Australian craftsmanship in there. I bet this thing absolutely flies. Another immaculately presented Ford. This is a Mark 1 Facelift Fiesta. It's absolutely, it's just perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. It's probably better when it came out of a factory. Take a look. Oh, there's original invoice here. Uh, it's an 83, so it's a very late one. So it'd be on an A. It's a 950L, so it's one up from the bottom of the range. And look at all the space in there. All the space. Um, early Escort, Mark 1, 68 plate. Very green. Ooh. Is this a Mark II Zephyr pickup? Bench seat and a column gear change as well, and the little umbrella handbrake. Oh, to you, so good. Um, Oh, so it actually, it actually, um, it actually were going to sell them in this country, didn't it? It was 1960. Well, like this uh, Mark II console convertible, that's of a nice. So it's a uh, 58. Spent most of its time in South Africa. It's a kind of sort of peach colour, sort of pastel shade. I think they used to call it this sort of thing. Another console. Again, pastel shade. This is a 61 low line, so it's a sort of later one. I think the Mark 3s came in um, 62, so yeah, quite a late one. Ooh. Light green with a dark. Light green interior. Crazy. Just take a brief look at some of these Sierra 4x4s. That one looks very nippy. Oh, that's our 4x4s. Well, it looks like it's had some modifications. Take it the owner of this has had it for some time if it's won so many awards. And again, just like, wow. <laughs> okay, so it is just perfect underneath. Uh, P100 modified to be very fast. 2.9 V6 Cologne, 3.1. Don't know what year this would be. It's a little light up thing you can get. Oh, there we go. Ah, uh, that one. So let's get this right. 88, 89. Literally in a war winning car.
Ooh. Now I didn't touch that plate view, that just sort of came off, but it does tell me that that is quite a late one of these, so it would be 91, 92. It's a very shiny engine base here today. Not that that's a particular surprise or anything. So this is um, the XR4i with the um, double rear windows and the funny spoiler. Look at that. That's a little one on the dashboard as well. August 83 this one, so it's a very early one. Okay, so go back and find some more. So this is the Mark 1 console Zephyr and Zodiac Club. They call them the Aota, these original ones. And this one's been a bit modified. We are doing an air ride suspension with this. Oh, beautiful Mark 1 Zephyr Zodiac. It's pointing out the, uh, it's got a six cylinder engine, which it did. Cream with a cream and green interior. And of course, column change, gold Zodiac badge, and the little mascot thing, which made it look ever so futuristic, yes. It had Zephyr and Zodiac badges on it. Um, I think this would be Zephyr 6 Estate by Abbott Safana. Again, it's a lovely colour. Ooh, a Zephyr convertible. I think they made a console convertible as well. I'm not entirely sure, but I, I do believe they did. Again, so typically 1950s, it was a colour thing. This is a 54. Very, very nice. Oh, this is the, what do you call them, the 100 E's, yes. Um, sort of prefects and Anglias and other things like that. I wonder if we've got any um, sort of escorts and squires, because those were the, those were the sort of estate versions. Uh, 1959 Anglia 100 E. I think have the um, side valve engine, the, these ones. This one's looked like a well-travelled car. It's been around a few places. 1958 Ford Prefect. Oh, yes, yeah, so, um, when they introduced the Anglia 105, they then decided to continue the remaining body shape and call it the popular. They just continued the, the so called sit up and beg popular. And this is a rat one. Um, I think the van version was called the Thames, from my memory. So what this is now, I I don't know. Answers in the comment section below. Ooh, more tasty treats. This has had a bit of work to it. Is this a, like a sort of X, X pack or something on this? With the uh, wide arches. It's a very early Mark III on an S because they came up in March 78. So, yeah, a very early one. This, I think, is a, an Escort 1300E. Um, 70. Oh, no, it's not, not an E. That's, that's that one. I don't know what 1300 is. It looks a bit like a 1300E though. It's got more wood in it, so I don't know. Again, just standard of cars around here is just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So it's a late one at 74, 75 plate. I think um, Mark II was launched mid 75, I'd like to say. Could be early 75. This sort of purple colour seems to be popular today. Good old Sibby lights on it. 
73-74 plate with a vinyl roof of course and the late Mark II Cortina two door. This is a Lotus Cortina. I didn't realise they came in this colour, but of course I could be wrong. More purple. Ah, oh, excellent. The Capri Club International branch with one of the original Mark III press cars, VHK 493S. 3 litre S, I think, from what I remember, This is two registration numbers away from the original Strato Silver Capri that was used in the second series of the Professionals by Lewis Collins, although that had a false plate on it. Uh, UOO 303T, I think it was. We've replicated the uh, shop by driving the quarry, but putting all sorts of stuff on the ground. That's going to take a while to clear up, I think. 1975 Mark II 3000 GT. Oh, a Piranha. 69 Mark I Piranha. Would have come from uh, South Africa, I think. Oh, a 2 litre laser. That's not very standard, though, to do this. That's um, it's been, shall we say, slightly modified. Paintwork is lovely on this, though. I do hope to film a, la a laser at some point. I have been offered one. I think it was offered one about two years ago. It just hasn't quite ever happened yet. It will happen one day, viewers. It will happen one day. That's an 84. I've seen this car before, actually. Is this, a... is this an RS 3100? Yes, it is, viewers. From 1974. Finally get these things right. After decades and decades of... Um, Getting them wrong. Ooh, Mark 1 600 GT XLR. It's quite an early one actually. It's a 69. So, which club is this? Mark 1 owns club. Okay. Ooh, that's, that's again. Almost perfect. 72 Capri 600L. But I went to the, the uh, fifth, fifth birthday of the Capri celebrations two years ago. The Mark 1s were very rare. So this is the Capri Mark 2 register. Quite a late Mark 2, this one. on an R, so it's a 77, so yeah, it's one of the, one of the later ones, fully Jurassic's engine. This um, orange car is um, still a specification to the car that was used in um, the first series of professionals by Lewis Collins, which was a kind of gold colour with brown roof. I think his was an auto. I, I, I forget now. But yes, very, very nice. Very nice indeed. Wow, some seriously old Fords here. Ford Y and C model register. Uh, I'd like to say that's a full model Y, but I really don't know. So what's this one? So that's a Model C, okay. So that's uh, the difference between them, they look a little bit different. So both pre-war, I think. Yeah, it's a 38, that one. I don't think I've ever seen one load before, because... So maybe, this is 35, so maybe this is 36, I think. Maybe it was built 35. Ford Model A. Get the thing that replaced the T. I, said, I read the other day that the T went out of production 
and it wasn't replaced by the A immediately. Um, I think someone else persuaded Henry Ford to stop production because it was seriously outdated to bring up a new car, and here we are. This is a 31 Model A Coupe. 1930 Model A Tudor sedan. Nineteen twenty eight Model A Phaeton. So a bit earlier, but it's got a different um radiator grill from the later one, so this is an earlier one. Nineteen thirty Model A Coupe converted to right hand drive. That's exciting. Ooh, is it Oh viewers. A Ford Squire. Oh, I don't know why I'm so excited to see this, but I've heard of these, but I've never seen one in real life. There we go. Ford Squire. This be probably immediately pre or post war. I forget which one it is. That is the first Anglia, I think. Sometimes I can cheat with the information sheets, but sometimes I can't. Uh, this one's this one's in Anglia. This is your two-door side valve. Don't know what year that is, I'm afraid, viewers. We should continue. Oh yes, 1954 Ford 10. They just keep ma just kept making this old sort of shape. I think they. Just put a Thames badge on it. Yes, it wasn't actually called a Ford, it was called a Thames. They, they dropped the Thames badge in 65, the introduction of the transit. Uh, there we go. Yes, this is the, this is the uh, post war type of Anglia. They made until 53, and then they kept making that as the. They called the Citizen Bag popular. So the last thing that um, I've come across in Hall 8 is Ford Cortina and Mark III Owners Club. This one is a 2 litre. I think, it, I think it's a Cortina GT. Yeah, it's a GT by the front end. Um, 73, 74 plate. Vinyl roof, of course. Another Cortina GT. This colour seems um, very vibrant. What a two door. Wow. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Better be careful with this one. It's a 71. Let's look at those. Um, those are tombstone style seats. This is a uh, an XL. There's an information sheet for me, so I can cheat. That's 2000. So, yeah, there we go. It's quite plush in here. That's a um. Probably a Type 9 gearbox there out of a uh, later car, something like a Mark II Granada. Yeah, Cortina XL 2 litre. Crayford Mark III Cortina GT. Wow, it's very, very, very beige. Is that a leather interior? Oh, I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. Very much. And fake wood as well. Very nice. So what year would this be? It's an L, so 72, 73. Crayford really did make a lot of conversions at this time. So the last stand we'll look at is the Ford Towner stand. This is the uh, TC Towners. This is a very early one. I didn't realize it would have been right-hand drive. I thought that was uh, taken up by the Cortinas. So 70, 71 plate.
This is um, one of the pre-TC townishes. I forget what exactly which one is. It's a 20M RS. Gets right-hand drive. That's interesting. Um, 70, 71 plate. Extremely kind of American looking car. A bit like, I don't know, a 1966 um, Ford Galaxy 500, something like that. Not as big as one of those, of course, but sort of similar looking to there we are. Again, like so many cars here, it's very, very black in here and it's a bit like a vinyl seat. Finish off this uh, tyre haul, we'll just maybe run around to the vans as well there because they're, they're here. And uh, Hall 8 is actually some distance from the other ones. Uh, so this is a another town as TC, two door. been um, modified a bit <laughs> featured in the magazines and things 7374 plate 1994 GMC Safari I think these are rear-wheel drive the sister van of these is the GMC Astro oh, sorry, this is, this is, uh, Chevy Astro sorry not the GMC this is the GMC Shows you how much I know about these, which is virtually nothing. This transit's been <laughs> quite extensively modified. There's nothing like the transits I've driven. Oh, Bedford CF2. Wow. Oh, I haven't seen a Bedford CF2 in a long time, viewers. Uh, yes, um, 8586 plate. Right, viewers, I think we're going to leave Hall 8 now. And um, in part eight of a slightly shambolic shuffle, we're going to go up to hall number four, where I believe there are some tasty treats awaiting me. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more parts. We did start yesterday with parts one to five. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below. Sorry it's been so shambolic, that's just the way it goes on this channel, I'm afraid. And uh, don't forget to switch on notifications to be informed of when the next part goes live. Thank you ever so much indeed once again.